Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you an S&P 500 index analysis video, big picture analysis in the S&P 500 index. I did record this video on Wednesday, June 15th, 2022. Let's take a look at the charts. Well, before I jump into them, I need to mention, uh, I know this is on YouTube, free video on YouTube, but I do a daily SPY report, a five to 10 minute video every day on the S&P 500 Spider ETF, the SPY, the actively traded ETF. Same formations are covered, same levels are covered, highly precise on a day-by-day -day basis, giving you buy and sell signals on a short, near, mid, and longer term basis. So I just wanna put that out there. If you trade the S&P 500, uh, if you trade the S&P 500 options, if you trade the SPY, certainly, or the SPY options, you may take a look at the S&P 500 or the uh, daily SPY report that I put out on wickedstocks.com. Uh, it's only $25 a month um, and it comes out every day. Anyway, this is a sell signal, basically illustrates the fact that we closed below a combination rising channel bottom and one third speed line the last week of April and uh, followed through again the first week of May. The first week of May uh, definitely um, challenged the sell signal, as you can see. We came pushing back above both lines on an intro week basis, but managed to fall off later in the week. That sell signal continued to play out, closing negative on the week the following week. And then we had our sell signal. Obviously, we got into a consolidated framework there for a month and a half or so, and then the big sell off the last couple of weeks. So this is sort of backtracking, showing you that there was a sell signal, a meaningful sell signal uh, in late April, and the result of which has been a test. I need to open this chart up a bit, go back to 2008, to show you that this week, actually Tuesday, June 14th, we tested the next target, which happens to be a significant and even more meaningful support level in terms of its um, in terms of its meaning. It's um, it is a 15-year channel top that we tested. We slipped below it by a hair, 3713.33 this week rises 264 a week. You can monitor the location of this long-term former channel top on a week-by-week -week basis all the way through the year. I'm telling my Daily Spy Report subscribers, FYI, that this is a formation that can contain annual selling pressures. This despite the heavy sell-off we've seen following that January high. This is sort of uh, one of the significant backstops that just may contain annual selling pressures. And from here, I'm envisioning higher trade over the next few weeks and the next few months. I'll get to those upside targets in just a moment. Let's take a look at the SPY itself just to show you that the SPY is also here. We did test the same exact formation in the SPY, broke below it by just a hair, a similar degree, 370.77 this week, rising 27 cents a week. Once again, you can monitor this formation uh, through the rest of the year. This formation is significant. It really marked a year and a half ago when we closed above it. The end of a period following really the financial crisis and following the COVID low, it sort of was the indicator for me at least that this market can actually now rally significantly. Despite the fact that prior to pushing through that channel top, if you look, uh, we had actually pushed through that February 20 high, that pre-COVID low, but there was still no clarity from my perspective in terms of longer term bullish continuation unless we closed above this formation that is presently at 370.77. Up until that point, I thought the market was prone to rotating south in a meaningful way on a multi-month basis. But here we are, 370.77 in the SPY, and the S&P 500 index is 3713.33. Now, the six-month sell-off that we see here on this chart, uh, you know, that may continue, could continue. 3713.33 is the sort of stick your neck out uh, buy zone. I realize it feels like buying, buying a falling knife, uh, but nonetheless, it's here and it can stop here and we can trade higher. But if we do close below it, uh, and even on a daily basis, but certainly at the end of the week, so Friday, June, what is that, 17th, if we close below 3713.33 by a 1% margin, and I have the number here for this week, 3676.20 or lower Friday settlement, June 17th, then we enter another phase of meaningful selling. And the initial target will be 3393.52, which is that pre-COVID high, February of 2020, 
3393.52. I would put this as a possible two to three week objective. I don't think any more than three to five weeks. So if it did occur this week, by the end of July, we should then test 3393.52. And overall, the next few months, I would expect 3195.28 to 3232.62. Now, I'm not a big Fibonacci follower, but I do cast them on my charts everywhere I go, uh, upside, downside, short-term, near-term, long-term, just to see where they line up with other line studies. And what I like about this is they are sort of synchronizing in a very similar region. And there are two very different uh, points that I'm following. A, B, the 2009 low against B, the more recent uh, January 2022 high. Uh, that is a 3 eighths downside Fibonacci at 3232.62 using those two extreme points, the 15 years or so of data, 13 years or so of data. And nearer term, a CB, which is the March 2020 COVID low against the more recent January 2022 high. The 5.8 downside on CB is 3195.28. And so I think if we close this week below 3713.33 by that 1% margin I showed you a moment ago, a two to three month target, possibly much quicker, could be inside of two months could potentially be by the end of July, where we reach this lower area. This is the next long-term backstop. So closing below 37.13.33, two to three month downside objective in the 3195.28 to 3232.62 area, where we once again encounter a long-term support region able to contain annual selling pressures. And once again, I don't anticipate seeing 3195.28 until or unless we close below 3713.33 by a 1% margin. Until then, 3713.33 is your bottom picking territory, not only for day traders, <clears throat> because it is there as a beautiful day trade level, but all, not only for swing traders, three to five day swing traders, and not only for two to three week uh, position traders, but for two to three month and beyond near term investors, 3713.33, a good area to buy. And uh, let's take a look actually uh, at, um, we'll zoom in here just a bit. I'm giving you the same levels here that you saw in the previous charts. Uh, you've got those Fibonacci retracement levels there shown uh, in the lower, but you also have the channel bottom here, 3713.33, rising 264 a week. And this is what I have now. This is based on this week's low, Tuesdays, June 14, the low. Now, if we take that low out, uh, these numbers get reconstructed. And this is a channel studies are a dynamic approach to trend identification. But what I'm telling my daily SPY report subscribers, and this is, it's obviously going to be the SPY level, these are the S&P 500 index levels. So holding above 3713.33, continued daily and weekly settlements above that long-term formation, I maintain, I think realistically, a two to three month uh, rebound rally up to that 4142.62 descending channel top that is based on the last six weeks or so of trade. It is a level that can contain monthly buying pressures when tested, and we can fall off from there. So you could monitor this. As long as this week's low is good, you can monitor the existence of that channel top through time, dropping 26.16 a week. For this week, the week of Monday, June 13th, it's at 4142.62, can contain at least weekly, quite possibly monthly buying pressures, and we could fall off from there back to the 3713.33 channel top within two to three weeks, three to five weeks of that. We could fill that wedge out potentially into later summer. But if we close above 4142.62, then 4356.13 is likely within just a few weeks, maybe even a single week of trade. And, you know, really what the way I see the two to three month time horizon is that holding above 3713.33 over the next two to three months, I do maintain a 4356.13 objective. It's just that at 4142.62 on the way up, we can tap out for at least a week, possibly a month. Uh, and then over time, I would anticipate because of the significance of 3713.33, that that actually carries with it a meaningful recovery rally out of here over the next few months to 4356.13. And that descending channel top dropping 2556 a week, also based in part on this week's low, able to contain quarterly buying pressures. So there is a scenario where right now in the middle of June, that by, by the middle of September, 
uh, or sooner, we can test that 4356.13 descending channel top. So long as we're continuing to hold above 3713.33, that 4356.13 channel top able to contain quarterly buying pressures, potentially through the rest of the year. So if we don't test that upper channel top until September, let's say, we could drop off of there all the way through the fourth quarter back to 3713.33. And it would be, last thing I'm going to say, the settlement above 4356.13 that would indicate for me a good annual low bullish continuation back to at least that January high and probably then some I would anticipate new all-time highs within three to five months or less of closing above 4356.13 keep in mind all of these levels all of these formations are actually used on a day-by-day -day basis same formations on daily charts uh, in the daily spy report highly precise levels uh, short, near, mid, long-term buy signals uh, that you can use for your options trading. Even in the S&P 500 index, you can use the daily SPY report for your SPX trading. That is all I've got for this particular S&P 500 index video update for the, what did I record this? Wednesday, June 15th. You have a great day.